Hi everybody, this is Sander from Dive and Travel and today we have a new presentation about beautiful underwater life in the Philippines. Uh, with us is Marlon Managa, Dive Center Manager of Magic Oceans Dive Resort and also the local biologist. Marlon is going to tell us everything about the yeah, creatures from the XXS to the XXL, so from the smallest to the biggest creatures we can find underwater in the Philippines. Hi, Marlon. Hi, Sander. How are you doing? Perfect. Yeah, I'm good. Um, yeah, I've been diving quite a lot also here. I'm enjoying the good times here with the pandemic. But anyway, um, we are going to talk about this XXS, the XXL uh, marine creatures that we can find it here in the country. All right. Perfect. Show us. All right. So let's start. So, so first of all, um, we are going to talk about the XXL. This is the, these are the tiny creatures to the biggest uh, creatures that we can find here in the Philippines, the marine creatures that we can find it here. I have, I think seven um, species that we can talk, we can discuss that I selected um, um, months ago. But the first one is a very cute and tiny one. It's a nudibranch. Um, it's called the Sean the Sheep. Technically, it's a sea slug, but most of the people, most of the divers, um, they are fun and um, they love watching and seeing, looking for the nudibranchs, and they call it like nudibranch. Sean the Sheep is a very beautiful one. So let's get started. So Sean the Sheep, Costacelia Kurushime. It's a sea slug, it's a type of sea slug, but they're very, very tiny, mostly um, less than one centimeters. That's around two millimeters, very tiny. Um, a lot here, if you are here at Magic Oceans Dive Resort here in Bohol, you can find them easily, like in one leaf, in one area, you can find hundreds of them. So it's easy to find for the Shondi sheep here. They usually live in the shallow uh, sandy bottom areas. Um, they're sub-sucking sea slug. Again, as I mentioned earlier, they're a sea slug. And they only live exclusively on this kind of algae here on the slide that I showed it, I'm showing it to you. It feeds on the Avrenvilla erecta. And Avrenvilla erecta, this is the green algae that they live on, okay? So also the shown the ship guys, they are uh, have this ability to have this clip two plus T. So they acquire the chloroplast that they ate from the green algae and use them um, for their uh, storing their energy also. Storing there and they use this one for their energy, which is quite cool for the Shondi ship. All right. Have you seen this one, Sander? Yeah, I've seen it one, but seen is a big word. It's, it's very small. <laughs> so if you have a magnifying glass looking at this less than one centimeter creature, you better have it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So the next tiny ones, we move from the very tiny one, we move a little bit bigger. I mean, still small, the pygmy seahorse. So the pygmy seahorse guys, if you can see, this is our logo from the Magic Oceans Dive Resort. So in other resort, in, um, we have our sister resort in Cebu, they have the Mandarin fish, it's called the Magic Island Dive Resort, okay? So this one is our pygmy seahorse, the Hippocampus bargibanti. And they're very beautiful creature underwater and I love them. So the size of our Hippocampus bergibanti guys can uh, reach to up to, uh, to around 2.5 centimeters, still considered to be very small, comparable to the Shonda ship, which is less than one centimeter, okay? So, but most of the time you can find them, especially on the Stefan, smaller, big, 0 0.7 centimeters, even smaller than the 2.5 centimeters. That's the biggest, okay? So the depth that they live can range from 10 meters to around 40 meters deep. So they live exclusively on these Gorgonian corals or the sea fan, which we simply call them. Um, these animals that like, looks like a sea fan on the wall. And um, this sea fan is called the Muracella. This is the genus of this um, Gorgonian. Um, they camouflage and they also change in coloration. Um, sometimes uh, the, the, there are two color variations of this one. You have the pink, like this picture. You also have the white, 
I mean the yellow, not the white, yellow, but also um, you have these uh, pinkish lumps, all right? So purple with pink tubercles and also the yellow with orange tubercles. And the diet of the pygmy seahorse, not only them, but also the seahorse itself, um, small crustaceans, you have fish larvae, and they use their like snout. They have don't uh, they don't have like a really mouth like us. So they have like a straw and they don't have stomach. So that's most interesting there. So for them to survive, they consume around 3000 brines daily. So think of it, a lot of like small creatures, small crustacean coming in from the mouth and going to the anus every day, right? So Marlon, how there many are also can you, other pygmy? How many can you find in a sea fan? Ah, good question. So recently, two weeks ago until three days ago, I dove in a place we call it here at Magic Oceans. We call it um, uh, um, Snuppers Cave. So on the Snuppers Cave dive site, there is one sea fan that houses 24 species of um, 24 individuals of the Bargibanti seahorse. Quite cool, right? So Beautiful. in just one fan, 20 plus individuals, and it's super nice. We had a lot of pictures and we still have pictures. And I think next time maybe I will go there and take a video of them. All right, that's cool. So there are also other pygmy seahorses that we can find here in the Philippines. Um, for example, in Cebu, in, in the central Visayas or in Luzon, you can find most of the hippocampus denisi. The most difficult there that you can you have to attempt to find is the hippocampus pontohi. Uh, they are very tiny also, but for us here at Magic Ocean's Dive Resort, we can easily find the Bergavanti pygmy. Super cool. All right. So moving on from the 2.5, we, we started from 1 cm then to 2.5 cm. Now we are growing a little bit bigger. So the frogfish in general, Though the frogfish, they can grow to a little bit more bigger, but we also have the tiny ones. For the picture, this is the warty frogfish, or you call it the clown frogfish. Super cute, right? Yep. So the frogfish, um, there are around 50 species worldwide. The size can range from 5 centimeters to around uh, 50 centimeters. That's the biggest. And most of the time, the very cute ones, the micro, the macro stuff that we can find here, around two millimeters. And those are the juvenile frogfish. Very beautiful. The most significant um, characteristic of the frogfish guys, they do have the lure. So this lure, the purpose of this one is to bait their prey. So that's why underwater, if you're diving, you also have the sign like this. So it's the lure of the frogfish. Others you have also like this because of their um, fins, the modified fins. So this is the picture of the lure on your slide there. Every species, they do have different kinds, types of lures. So these lures, if you're living in a coral reef environment, they also adapted to this kind of like area. For example, the lure look like a shrimp, look like a fish larvae, so something like that. If the frogfish live in a sandy bottom area, for example, the hairy frogfish, they do have the warm-like lure. It means that they do have like a warm structures on their forehead, okay? And they are very good ambush predators. They're not a good swimmer, guys. They lack the swimming bladder. Most of them, they lack the swimming bladder. So instead of floating, they just simply sink and then they do an ambush type of predating. So they use this kind of mechanism, the gape on stock feeding. So meaning to say, opening their mouth at high speed, water molecule coming in and suck. And that's it. And you know, they are the fastest. That's 1,000 of a second. And it's very fast. So don't try to blink your eye if the frogfish are, are feeding underwater. Okay, it's a good phenomenon underwater also. Um, so frogfishes like this, so in the coins, just to have the comparison, you have a one peso coin there, very tiny. Okay, cool, that's mm size frogfish. So next is the medium size. So if you have the five to around 50 centimeter, now we are getting larger and larger. So this is a sea turtle. 
So sea turtle, guys, we are very fortunate that we have a lot of sea turtles here at Magic Ocean's Dive Resort in Anda. You don't have to go to the island. You, have, you don't have to go very far to find sea turtles. Sea turtles are just in front of you. Like one foot, you can find sea turtles here. All right. So there are around seven species worldwide, but we are very proud here in the Philippines, five species of sea turtles um, that you can find it here. All right. Um, so for you, for those of you guys, um, five species, those are the green sea turtles. You have the hawksbill sea turtles, which are very common here at Magic Ocean's Dive Resort. Um, we do have olive ridleys, we have the loggerhead, and we also have the leatherback. Okay, so the leatherback, this is the biggest um, sea turtle in the world. So the size of the sea turtle is around 60 to around 200 centimeters. That's the length. So the weight of the sea turtles coincides with the, uh, the length also uh, from 50 kilos to around 650 kilos. So just imagine 650 kilos, it's, it's very heavy. Cool. So moving on, they are an egg laying reptile and they are also conscious breathers. So that's why if you're swimming with the sea turtles, please don't grab the sea turtles, guys. And um, please don't touch them, but take pictures or just say hi to them or wave uh, because they're also breathing like us. So they are coming to the surface, coming up to the surface to breathe. So don't try to block their path, especially if they're going up for breathing, all right? So the lifespan of the sea turtles, according to the, to, according to the movie, it's called The Finding Nemo, there was a sea turtle there when Marlin uh, asked this sea turtle, how old are you? And the sea turtle said, like, I am 100, I don't know, 100 plus years. So this is really true. So we, the average human, can just live to around 50, 60 um, years of age. Them, they can still be alive. So reproduction and incub incubation for the sea turtle is vital for them. So how are you going to differentiate between the male and the female? So the males, guy, guys, they have long tail, long and large tails. Well, the females, they have shorter tails if you compare it to the males. And most of the sea turtles here at Magic Oceans, the resting sea turtles here are females. So prior to incubation period, especially for the reproduction, um, because they are going to the beach to nest, um, their eggs, lower temperature, for a lower temperature can result more um, males. males yeah. So um, higher temperature, it means short incubation period will result, uh, result into females. That's cool and it's very interesting for them. So their status guys, they are kind of like in danger. This is according to the IUCN red list. Um, there are several reasons. Um, poaching, for example, a lot of people are going to poach them because uh, of their um, meat and also their shells. So their shells in the black market, highly valuable there. Um, also, they're kind of like in danger because a lot of like um, um, fishing practices, fishing methods, they're using the fishing nets, ghost nets, for example, and it's really bad for them. All right. So I think no questions for the sea turtles. They are very cool. So moving on, it's also a highlight species here in the country. It's called the thresher shark. So the thresher shark, we are very proud here in the Philippines that you can find them here. So alopia species. So you have three species living in the world um, for the alopias or the thresher sharks. So you have the oceanic species, three species oceanic, you have the pelagic and also the big eye thresher sharks. Um, the sizes can be from three to around six meters. Okay, they're not so big treasures, but the thing is um, they're quite small, but the length is um, really long. So their diet includes small fishes, the group of fish, herrings, for example, sardines. And their special weapon is very, um, uh, they're very famous for this one. They have their long cuddle fin or this tail. So this tail, they're using this one um, for praying or for the predation itself. So they're kind of like slashing the school of fish. You can hear it underwater, like boom, 
boom, it will kind of like explode. So if you hear that underwater, preferably that's going to be the treasure shark, right? So they live um, in the coastal to open water up to around 500 meters well, um, where they hunt also. And then where to see consistently worldwide, bam, bang, it's in here, the Philippines, all right? Do you have questions about this one, Treasure Shark? Now, I know that there are around Malapasqua on, uh, on Mona Chol, but is that a yeah. residential uh, Treasure Shark or do they migrate or? Yeah, so in the Philippines, we have um, a place called Malapasqua. So in Malapasqua, it's between uh, Cebu and also Leyte. So you have a shoal there, it's called Monad Shoal. So in Monad Shoal, guys, this is the cleaning station of most treasure sharks. Most of the treasure sites that you can find uh, there is the um, um, oceanic um, treasure sharks. Uh, but they are so, they're so good. They're so cool. Um, also, the treasure sites that you can find in there, it's not only one, it's not only two, it's not only three, but probably 20 or more, even more than that. So recently, two weeks ago, tiger sharks there. So I think I need to go back there as soon as the borders will be open. All right. So it's a cleaning station, guys. It's a monad show. That's why consistently I will give you 99% that you can find treasure sharks on that area. So if you want to see treasure sharks, come here in the Philippines, visit Monad Shoal. So let's go now to the biggest, to the biggest, the biggest, biggest fish, biggest fish alive or biggest shark in the ocean, which is called the whale shark. So the whale shark, guys, is only one, Rhynchodontipus. That's the scientific name. And they can live up to around 20 meters. So in comparable... Uh, the size is comparable to the bus. So if you're sitting in front of the driver's seat, then that's it. So you're in front of the driver's seat and that's how small you are if you compare it to the, to the biggest um, whale shark. My personal encounter, the biggest one, I think was 12 meter whale shark. It's still big, right? So the weight of the whale shark can be up to 20 tons. So it's really big and it's huge and it's heavy. So in the Philippines, guys, um, we are also very proud that we are the second most populated whale sharks around the globe. So the whale sharks, they are migratory animals. So for example, the whale shark that you can find in the Philippines, probably they go to Japan, they go to Vietnam, they go to Malaysia, they go to Indonesia and coming back. So the reason for this migration is that they have uh, they're going to reproduce and also for feeding. So for feeding, they're the biggest but tends to eat the smallest. So wherever the, the, the animals that they're trying to feed, which are the krills and small fishes, they go there. So that's why they migrate. So um, in addition also to the whale shark, they are very harmless if you compare it to other sharks that you call them terror or voracious. It's kind of like that. For me, I'm not afraid of sharks. I love sharks and they're, they're all, for me, they're all harmless, all right? So they are called the gentle giant. That's the whale shark. So whale sharks don't have the teeth that other sharks do. So they are filter feeder. So they gulp water, sucking a lot of like fish, feed the filter here and that's it, okay? So their diet includes small fish and their favorite krills. So the status of the whale sharks, they are critically endangered. Same with the sea turtles also and other species that you can also dolphins there. Um, them critically endangered because of mainly for their fins. So a lot of people until now, they love to have this kind of like uh, shark fin soup. So please don't support the shark fin soup. And also the, the, the net fishing is also not good. Um, it's not good, it's not sustainable anymore. So that's why they're critically endangered. Other places uh, before here in Bohol, um, the locals are feeding also whale shark. So that's why there is an island called Panilakan Island and it's called Pilak. That's their like, I think arrow that they, they're going to pray for this whale shark. 
But um, it's the well shark season here. So um, oftenly we can find well sharks in the wild just in front of the house reef, but not every day. It's not 100% guarantee, but in a week or two weeks or three weeks, we can find, I think one, two um, well sharks here. So we are very fortunate also to, to see the biggest um, animal in the world. I mean, not animal, but the biggest fish, all right? So the lifespan of a real world shark can take up to 70 years. That's for them. Sexual maturity can up to 30 years. And that's cool for them. All right. So um, Bonus. we have a bonus slide. We are going to discuss about the octopus a little bit. So octopus, they are a very cool organism. They do have eight arms. That's why they are called octo, octopus. So here in our segment, we have the mimic versus the wonderpus, the mimic octopus and the wonderpus. So which is which? Based on the picture, how about you, Sander? Yeah, which is the mimic? To be honest, I always get confused. So there must be a trick to, to see which one is which. Yeah, you are right. Um, on the picture, you can give justice there. You can easily identify them. But underwater, if you're not an expert or, or if you're not used to it, um, it's, it, it will be confusing. It's like, ah, it's still a mimic. Oh, it's a wonder puss. It's a mimic. Unless you know how to identify them. So the easiest, the easiest part there to identify is this one. Then that one there. So on that arrows there, you have the white border lines, each tentacles. All right. So this one here is our mimic octopus. So the mimic octopus do have the white border lines, each of their tentacles. On the other hand, the wanderpus, if you look closer, they don't have these white border lines. So that's the easy way, easiest way how to identify between the two. So next time if you're going for a dive to see if it's a mimic or a wanderpus, look for the white border lines there. Cool? Cool, Sander? Yes, now you know. I know what I see. All right. I hope it helps. Um, before I end my, uh, my topic, our topic, the XXS to XXL marine creatures here in the Philippines, I would love to, to say thank you to Sander Kule from Dive and Travel. Um, and also, I'm, I will not be here if it's not for the Magic Oceans Dive Resort, which is from Magic Resorts itself, Philippines. Um, visit, if you are going to Cebu, uh, we have a resort called Magic Island Dive Resort. The highlights there, if you go to Cebu, is we have a sardine run. And we, it's, for me, it's not run anymore because they're not running. It's a storm or how do you call it? So it's a sardine storm there, millions of them. If I say millions, millions. If you go underwater, you will be covered by a dark cloud there. That's your sardines. You go to Magic Oceans Dive Resort, you have a chance to see very colorful, very tiny ones, rare ones, and also a chance to see biggest um, fish in the ocean also. Um, now, recently, we have a resident uh, eagle race, so that's cool. And we have also the, the, um, the dolphins occasionally now. Um, and two weeks ago, we saw an albino dolphin. And earlier, just today that I'm, I'm saying right now, like, 30 minutes ago, we also see, and we saw the albino dolphin, which is oh, really nice. Cool. Nice. Now, Marlon, thank so, you very much for this, uh, for this presentation. It's always nice welcome. to know a little bit more about what we see underwater. And next time we see a whale shark or next time we see a mimic or wonder puss, we know how to uh, de determine them. Hey, if, uh, if everybody wants more information, look down. We've put the links over there for the resort. We put the links of dive and travel, and there you can all the, find all the information about uh, diving in the Philippines. Marlon, thanks again, and have a nice day. Yeah, thank you so much, um, Sander Kule from Dive and Travel. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.